What's up, everybody? So I'm back with this part two. Just gonna probably be the last part of the feature film of this. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm reacting to this because I think that there's so much hip hop conversation in here. Uh, look, Doggy Diamonds, whether you agree with him or not, um, I think he's spot on with a lot of what he's saying. And the truth is people don't talk about the music anymore. This is why this game has become so bad. And I see sometimes on the internet, be like, oh, he's a hater, Doggy Diamonds. And I'm like thinking, we're supposed to be talking about the fucking music. This is literally why this genre has fallen off. No one talks about the music. Everyone talks about all this extraneous shit that don't matter. Oh, yo, who are you dating? You know, what were, you, what were your numbers on Billboard? What's your legacy? Who gives a fuck? You saw Mike Tyson. Fuck a legacy. Who cares? What's your music like? <laughs> so anyways, let's get into it. You know what else was trash that y'all gassed, that y'all ain't gassing no more, and I told y'all it was trash from the first place? Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. The LL album is fucking booty. <laughs> told y'all it was corn. Total, total buns. Listen to that shit. We thinking we gonna hear LL rhyme on some tribe core beats. This nigga was rhyming over shit, the roller skating ring music. <laughs> Q tip, what the fuck is you doing? That ain't the same dude who did yeah. give up the goods. No that doubt. ain't the same dude who did tribe music, who did gangster bitch for Apache. Yeah. This shit sound like we gonna go roller skating when this fucking music come on. That shit sound like disco. Yeah. I told y'all. Yeah. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Trash. Total trash. And like, I have talked about this too, because to me, the real letdown on that album was Q-Tip. Respectfully, it was the production. Um, you know, LL was, was actually, he's, LL was kind of hungry a bit, you know, um, given his age and rap. He was trying, but the beats were just not it, man. They weren't it at all. And there were, and I had mentioned this, uh, given some examples. Watch my review of The Force. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I, I talked about this. Um, the Force review. So, you have a look at that. I did talk about Q-Tips production um, overall. You'll see that. And, um, yeah, it was it was a letdown, big time. It was Some of these tracks, they were too close to the original sample um, and in a way gave off almost like an indie rocky type of like, oh, yeah, like if we were out, like Doggy Diamonds mentioned, at some bar or whatever, sure, we'd hear that. But that's not really hip-hop music you know what i'm saying so i agree with him told y'all y'all don't even listen to it no more mm -hmm. no replay value i don't give a fuck if he a legend or not i never said he wasn't no legend yeah. but you could be a legend and be whack that's a fact i said it was whack yeah. shit was fucking <sighs> now from here he goes on to talk about um dr dre and uh you know I know there are whack ass sort of little singles that are out by Ice Cube, and and I agree. I mean, look, listen, and the bust of you know whack verses and all that shit. I, I look, listen, it, it's being a dead horse in a sense. Um, but <laughs> he did have a funny point about how like you know when you can tell something is garbage is like you know you can they Dr. Dre previewed this apparently and Snoop at um, uh, like I think on the show or whatever on Revolt. I haven't seen the episode, but. Um, you know, your friend is just there like, yeah, that's good. That's booty like that. That's that's this shit's garbage. But, you know, it's be it's above my pay grade to say anything about it type of vibe. Yeah, man. It's, it's funny. Like, this is the thing with hip hop. It's just gone. So it's gone so political. It's unreal. And look, I'm not expecting, you know, Monori or your friend to be like, that's garbage. That you know, like necessarily. I mean I get it. You don't necessarily want to diss your friends, especially if they're guests, but at the same time, if they're your boys, and this is exactly what Doggy was talking about, like if they're your peoples, you gotta let them know like before the show, hey, listen, I know you guys wanna preview that, that shit's kinda uh, you know, like maybe you wanna Because the worst thing is to then turn around you know, dick eat it in the public and then turn around in private and be like, oh, you know, that shit was, you know, they lost it, man. Snoop ain't on top no more. It's, it's just fake. And I know, look, listen, it's nature of the business. Business is fake, whatever. But still, no one's winning. Like, the audience isn't winning and we're, you know, and they're not necessarily winning. 
So let's move forward a bit here. Let's see what else Doggy was talking about. I'm going to get these dope ass beats. Yo, I'm writing for my life. If you got money and you're not rapping for hunger or change, then you don't need to be rapping. See, I agree with this mostly. Um, I think what makes hip hop cool, and this is why they say hip hop is a young man's game, is not because that you literally have to be young to be in hip hop. People say it's a young man's game because there's a hunger that's in hip hop that doesn't really exist in other genres. Let's be real here. There's a certain hunger and that hunger is a youthful type of hunger because when you're young, you want to prove yourself, right? I mean, this is literally so much of this of hip hop is what they call Bill Dong's Ramon. Oh, I'm going to Bill Dong's Ramon. I, I always, my spelling is atrocious now. Exactly. So a novel dealing with one's formative years or spiritual education, right? Like a lot of hip hop is that, and that's kind of the appeal of it. It's that sort of like, going from a child to a man type of thing. And that's a certain hunger, right? Um, or if they're going from a, uh, you know, a, a man that didn't have shit to a man that now has something. So again, the point is that the hunger has to be there. It doesn't mean that you like, and this is why you have to really give credit to the Nas and the Jays of the world. And this is why, again, we put them on this pedestal because even after they made money, like, Nas was probably already had made some money after Illmatic. And yeah, we can talk about it was written being a little sloppy and all that shit. But the truth is that Nas consistently was hungry on some level. He's, he's musically hungry. So he still has something to prove, quote unquote. Now, of course, I would argue that once the mid 2000s kind of hit, I think Nas felt like he didn't really have anything to prove anyway. And there was really no competition. There was nobody. There was no Jay, you know, barking at him to stay, you know, hungry with the pen and make great music. So he kind of started to slip a little bit, you know, but the point is that hip hop rewards hunger. Hip hop is about hunger, some sort of hunger, hunger of thought, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be for food, but it does have to be like, I need to, to explain or show or demonstrate something. And if you don't have that artistic hunger, like, why are you in this shit anymore? That's a fact. If you good already and you're not rapping for food, you need to you need to chill. Seriously, you need to chill. If you if you good, see, rap used to be about hunger, trying to change your life. If you're not trying to change your life from your raps, then you don't care. Right. And then they be like, "Yeah, I got a verse from such and such. You got a verse from who? <laughs> that nigga gave you one of these right here." For sure. Seriously. Uh -huh. Shut up. Okay. That shit was mid. That shit was mid. Fucking. <laughs> We thought we was getting some fucking Dr. Dre and Snoop chronic no, yeah. 2079 or whatever the well, fuck. Well, we first of all, I didn't think that shit. I, and, you know, frankly, um, I. When was the last song Dre and Snoop put out that was that was heat, really? Boss Life? What's that song? Live that boss's life. This was fire. And this was what? Like, geez, what year was this? 2006? I'm trying to remember when this came out. Boss Life. 2006. Damn, I got a good memory. So, yeah. Like, I don't expect anything from them at this point. It's been 20 years plus. We thought we was going to get. We got fucking Snoop Lion and, and, and <laughs> the nigga that was on the cover of fucking the world class wrecking crew. Like, that's what we got. Come on, man. Shit is fucking whack. Everybody be hyping shit like it's dope. It can't be me. I make beats like this. I make be <laughs> okay. beats like this. It can't be me. It can't be me. <laughs> uh, respectfully, doggy, um, this beat is booty. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's booty. 
it's it's good for a talk show, right? Like like what you do. It's actually not it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's kind of it's soft and it's very like, you know, you know, and, and, and now you're it's almost it almost reminds me of the eighties to a certain degree, like those T V shows and you know and now here comes, you know, Rex Strotter or whatever, some random and then, you know, a person steps up and and you know, with the with the bad hair from back then and um with the um and with a studio audience like that that's what this beat reminds me of it's not good no one's rapping to this beat in fact if if this beat was given to ray and ghost or whoever i'd be like fuck why are they rapping on these garbage ass beats again don't forget don't forget doggy diamonds did this it can't be me it can't be me I played y'all my music. Y'all heard what I do. It can't be me. <laughs> Goodness gracious. What's your name? We who? Million? We ho? We ho? Is your name J Electronica goaded? What is this goaded shit you talking about? I don't even know what goaded is. Y'all. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all individuals with these new terminology, all dicky, goaded and glazing sure. and all of that, that's not a loop, bozo. It's not a loop. Of course, well, it's a sample, but it ain't a loop. <laughs> I could play a lot of my shit. It's funny, like, dog, you have people in this comments. I'm pretty sure I've been, uh, uh, I don't think I, I actually, I think I've like, if, for example, if I was to comment on doggy's channel, I think I'm probably blocked or some shit. Cause I don't really see my comments show up. Um, but, uh, doggy will get you up out of there fast, <laughs> but somehow there, he always happens to find people that, that come through and they're like, man, you don't know what to talk, whatever. And he just be, he just explode on them. I mean, personally, to me, I, I'm not really big on dissing your audience. You know, like if people are listening to you, um, unless they like say something like directly, like, you know, against you as an individual, like as in like your, your, you know, your family or some shit like that. Right. Like if they just have an opinion or they don't like this, you know, um, particular song or something that you said, like, that's fine. Again, like you see me in the comment section when I talk my shit. I don't care if you disagree with me. I've never have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Like I actually welcome that because I might I might have something wrong. But what obviously what I will bark at you is if you start trying to play me or trying to, you know, diss me directly. That's corny. You know what I'm saying? Like that's super corny. And even then I might I'll probably just ignore you. Like it's not like I'm not gonna mention you in a live and all that shit. I'll, a lot of times I'll just ignore you. Or I'll say something funny back or whatever and then keep it moving. What difference does it make? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I talk over this. I talk over this beat. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you what I talk over. Talk. I could play a beat I talk over. Doggy Diamonds did this. I talk over this beat. Talking. Talk. Doggy Diamonds did this. I don't really like this beat, but, but I will say this though. Um, again, for just like a radio show, talking, totally. It, it works, it's fine. Um, but if you're talking about like, again, for musical rapping purposes, like this, this beat is trash <laughs> and it's very rudimentary in, in some ways. And, you know, if you're going to talk as a producer and say, look, Q-Tip was trash or this producer was garbage, I've got better shit. And then you play weak shit like this. that's not even spittable. There's, there is a way it looks. Part it's it's it is a way like to a certain extent. Someone be like, ah, this nigga's a hater. Is he a hater? But anyway, I get. I'm not gonna judge Doggy too too tough on this because at the same time, 
he is saying I talk over this and it's like again just for like interlude shit in the background whatever it's fine because we ain't even really paying attention to beat like that anyway <laughs> Oh, this was the X Factor. I don't know what what sample this is, but um, you know, Lauren Hill has X Factor. That's where I remember that particular sort of piano bit from. This is like typical boom bappy type shit. And and to me, this is kind of, I think my issue with with Doggy's taste. I think it's a little too stuck in boom bap. You know, um, and look, boom bap to me is the best hip hop, in my honest opinion, um, for a bunch of reasons. You know, like the the groove of it, it's the it's the best groove when you want to say something of actual importance. This is why the best rappers made their bones on boom bap beats, whether it be Nas or Hove or Prodigy. It's just something about the drum pattern of boom bap that allows enough space for you to really express your personality and say a lot and be wordy and writerly while also still having that groove so we can get into it i feel like the other sort of beat patterns like the like the southern shit the you know with uh, that memphis stuff it doesn't really work that way you know it's very much more like we you know it's just riding but you're not really like getting in there and rapping it's not some az come up where you're really spitting writerly it's very just like sing songy we chilling you know you just kind of bob along. It's a different thing. And bobbing along is fine. But if you want to spit that shit, you kind of need boom bap. This is why whenever you see people um, that want to say something, that, that really want to express something, it, even in other cultures that like, for example, other cultures that let's say like a guy who's in, I don't know, Syria, that wants to make music about his situation in Syria. And he wants to make rap music about the situation in Syria. He has something to say. Chances are it'll be a boom bap beat because there's just something about the way the boom bap is structured that, um, you know, lets you want to express yourself. Talk, talk over that. That's the rundown music. Y'all know. Mm -hmm. It's all right. It's all nice. I got beats the waist. <laughs> beats the waist. I ain't never make nothing whack. I talk over that. Yeah, but that bar is low, doggy, respectfully. You could know the sample all you want, but you know what y'all never going to have? Y'all never going to know how to do them swings, them drum sounds, and how to chop. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. Dean Sims. That's like the third or fourth uh, derogatory thing you said. You capping, and now you're out of here. See that? See how they go? <laughs> this nigga was this anyway. <laughs> anyway. You can see the comment, but whatever. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Always pay it back. Anyway. So now that I got that out. Let me tell you who I do like, uh -oh. what I'm digging, uh -oh. what I'm rocking with. This is always where it gets iffy. With I like Vinny Idol. Vin Vinny Idol. See, I've heard this name, but I'm trying to remember who's Vinny Idol. Vinny Idol. I've heard Vinny Idol, but I'm just trying to remember... I mean, these are people that I've heard of and I've, I've heard one or two songs and just been like, eh, next. And I don't remember anything I heard from them. So that's usually not a good look. Um, but Vinny Idol make beats? Oh, he's a producer. Let me see what this playlist is on here. Okay. None of these look like beats that... I don't know none of these songs. Um, yeah. Vinny Idol. I don't know. I don't know none of these songs. I mean, they work with the locks, cool, but let's see. How does this work? 
Vinny Idol. Like I'm sitting on a tear with years left ahead. Too much pain, but I ain't got a tear left to shed. I'm speaking to myself like, yeah, get the bread. The meat and the cheese too. The money you'll appease you in case the love leaves you. Raindrops, man. Vinny Idol is incredible, incredible producer. Vinny Idol. You don't know who Vinny Idol is? Vinny Idol is incredible. Okay. He did Bing Bong for Nas. Incredible. Bing Bong? What the fuck? Bing Bong for Nas? What? What's he talking about, man? Vinny Idol. Is he t no, that was, I was thinking TikTok, but that's Nas. Um... Oh, he's talking about for Nems. Oh, uh, is Gorilla Nems? <laughs> uh, you know, Boom Bap is much more than that, man. You know, it, it's like it, it. They're all. It's like they're trying to do that almost onyxy. Uh, it's a very specific. You know, they they think they're doing you know hip hop, real hip hop, but it's just it's boring. It's like, this shit's boring. There's no, like, real soul to it. It's not fun. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, great rap that was gangster was gangster and fun. This is just like... And then in the background, that shit sucks. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling that, but that's just my opinion. I like Rome Street. Rome Street is trash. I'm sorry. I've heard... Incredible. Rome, Rome Street's... Um, See, and, and no one outside of like a certain audience listens to Rome Streets. I mean, look at this shit. Like that—that's your picture. Corny. The name is corny. Rome Streets, as in you roam the streets. Rome Streets with a zip. That shit's. We haven't been doing that. That you see that. Um, the first rapper I remember really doing that sort of like, um, you know spelling like changing the spelling not using the like the real spelling quote unquote like an s and putting a z i remember it was red man to me um and i could be wrong but i just remember again this is when i came into rap like i've told you i was started to really listen to it heavy in 97 98 so i just remember it was like a red man was doing that kind of shit and it was funny and it was interesting because it was like they were playing he was playing with language and shit but it's also just like when I see the word Rome Streets with a Z, I'm just like, oh my God, this is so fucking 90s. But like, why now? It's 2024. It's, you know, like, it's a corny name. You know what I'm saying? Like, come up with something unique and shit. Streets with a Z? Like, fuck out of here, man. I'm sorry, that sounds like a tangent. But again, names say a lot about what you're dealing with, right? Forward, never backward. 38 Spesh. Another corny name. 38 Spesh. Spesh? 38 Spesh sucks. I've tried I've tried to listen to 38 Spesh. This guy sucks. It's mad fucking boring. Vocally, the name is corny. I'm sorry. I've tried. You know what I'm saying? He just doesn't have it. Like, he's one of these guys. I think he came on the scene or when people started paying attention to him was because he had an album with G-Rap or something like that. I think it was like called Son of G Rap and G Rap was on it. Again, this is that cosine shit, plant shit. You know what I'm saying? Like 38 Special on his own is not making no noise or no buzz. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's standing next to Cool G Rap. So it's like, oh, okay, I guess I should listen to you. But this is some of the stuff that you can't be talking about, you know, Q Tip and Red Man and all the shit's corny and then go to 38 Special. Because 38 Special is even worse than all that shit, respectfully. Like, I would rather listen to Red Man, as garbage as that shit is. I'd much rather listen to Red Man freestyle over a Bonita Apple Bump than 38 Special any day of the fucking week. Got a song with Havoc and Lloyd Banks. 38 Special had the best verse. Uh, I don't know about that, but, you know. You say Havoc and Lloyd, ba <laughs> Lloyd Banks. <laughs> uh, I, I don't listen to Lloyd Banks. So, he had the best verse on a weak song that no one cares about. That was a weak song. Well, who cares? That's my brother face in the building. He got the SB1200 after me. And then I showed him how to use it. Where my SB1200 at, like, man? Let me. Come in here. You know, Rome Streets, El Camino, El Lo Ito. I think he even mentions Lo Ito. It, it's all the same. It's like this, like, collection Griselda. This, this like, 
you know, struggle, boom, bap shit. I, I can't listen to that stuff, man. That stuff's garbage. I'm telling y'all, I like 38 Spash. Spash. Stabbed and shot two out right now. Stabbed and now. shot two, right? So listen, you're talking about names, right? The stabbed and shot sound like a fucking brilliant tape, an album you just got to hear. When you say 38 Spash, stabbed and shot, what do you think? Oh, damn, I got to listen to that. That's fresh. <laughs> Fuck out of here. See, this is where I'm talking about respectfully, doggy. You're not being consistent. Because you can talk about why is, you know, Fabulous took making songs called Bust Down and shit like that. Or why is Dave East talking about Percocet shit in 2024. But you're listening to a nigga talking about Stabbed and Shot, 38 Special, third Stabbed and Shot in 2024. Right? Stabbed and Shot. We ain't been talking about niggas been stabbed and shot since the fucking 90s. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that. Again, you know, it's easy to throw stones. But then not look within and go, hmm, you know, I wonder if what I'm saying actually applies to the shit that I like. And that's where a lot of people can't make that bridge. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. Now, you'll notice me, and this is why I say I'm the best hip-hop reviewer on YouTube. I'm fucking consistent. If you look at my shit, I've never told you that rhymes are the most important thing. To me, I've always stressed that beats are the most important thing in hip-hop. To me. And that's because, well, to me, it's kind of common sense. Hip hop is a beat driven genre. It starts with the DJ, right? Who was putting on beats. So to me, the beats, the beats, the beats. And then after that, the voice. I don't listen to anyone digging rhyming and some bullshit. But as long as the beats and the vocals are there, to me, that's the hard part. That's how you, that's actually the really difficult part in hip hop. It's not so much the rhyming ability. But my point is, I'm pretty fucking consistent. The reason I like Lil B is the same reason I fucking like, I don't know, Playboy Cardi. It's the same reason I like Redman or whatever, right? Vocally, I like the voices of people. And I like the beats that they choose to rap on. But, you know, someone, and I don't want to put Doggy too much on the, on the spot here, but some other people be like, oh, I like this rap, but then I don't listen to this other type of music. But it's like, do you not see the correlation between the two? Like, they're both old school as fuck right or whatever or whatever reason whatever reason you hate this other shit for it's really can apply to the same thing that you do our brother graph got an album out right now graph is super boring i'm sorry graph i remember when graph came out and he's talking about graph with an h i i couldn't tell you a single song by graph graph has no songs right he was talking about earlier oh dave east ain't, ain't got no signature songs what the fuck does graph have Graf has no songs. What song by Graf do you remember going, oh yeah, I remember Graf, he was dope. He had that one, what bar has Graf ever had? And again, I, I, you know, Graf to me is in that boring, you know, mixtape, smack DVD type rapper that we saw come out of New York. They were all garbage. Papoose, Graf, uh, Red Cafe, all that shit was fucking garbage. And I'm sitting there, I was like, man, this shit's trash. And I would look like, you know, people, you're a hater. You don't like, what are you talking about? And none of that shit stuck. None of, none of that stuff stuck. In fact, the funny thing is, if you look back on that entire era, the only rapper that stuck from that 2007-2008 New York era that was new was French Montana. Why? Because French had them beats, Nika, and he had some sort of presence. And he was doing something a little like with Harry Fraud. There was, was something different, and it was still, and it was hard, and it worked. All these other guys were just it just they were just there and just fucking flopped. So again, you, Graf equals Graf is Graf J Cole and Dave East are the same rapper to me. It's just that one of them might have had more roaches in their crib than the other. Ransom Another boy is the hottest rapper out. And been the hottest dude for years, and nobody don't really be saying that. A lot of people be playing. Well, nobody's saying it because it's not true. That's why. <laughs> I mean, it's not you know, like you can't be that dude, and no one's really talking about you, or no one's ever really talked about you like that. Again, I remember when I heard Ransom back in I don't know, like two thousand and six or some shit, two thousand seven. Ransom has never been a factor. 
I heard about him because I think he beat up or one of his mans got beat up by Joe Biden or some shit, something goofy, right? The music was always blunts. So you've been rapping all this time. Again, I can't tell you one signature song by Ransom where, again, what I mean by signature is you don't have to like that artist, but you know because whether it's be in the parties or other hip hop heads have talked to you and been like, you know, that shit's fire. I like that song. You don't have to like Jada Kiss to like, you know, knock yourself out. That's a signature song by Jada Kiss. You feel me? Like, you don't have to like ASAP Rocky to like Peso or some of the other joints that he has. Peso was a signature song by Rocky. I go out, I remember, like, just being in New York. I heard Peso, and this is years after, I'd hear Peso. I'm not sure that person was really an ASAP Rocky fan like that, but that's a signature song by ASAP Rocky. Or if you want to say fucking problems, whatever. But my point is that, what's your signature record? If you've been rapping all this time and you have not got one signature song, you're trash. It's really that simple. Ransom. Say it again. Ransom. Rep in Jersey, but we not gonna say he the hop is rap, hottest rapper from Jersey. We gonna say he one of the hop, hottest rappers. Period. I keep saying hopping. He wanna say hip hop. What's my email address? Dollar sign Doggy Diamonds. That's my email. <laughs> it's pinned to the top. Use that. How you saying Jada Kiss coming out with a dope album and Jada Kiss ain't never had a dope album? <laughs> Cut it out. We going to be honest. We being honest tonight. Yeah. He ain't never had a dope album. He had dope, dope records, but he ain't never had no dope album. So stop. Now, this is actually a really interesting point. I'm going to look this up because I, I want to agree with Jada Kiss never having a dope album. I want to agree with it. Um, in fact, I'm trying to remember what I have actually heard. And a lot of the problems I also find with Jada Kiss's stuff is that his albums kind of run together. You know, like, what's really the difference between Kiss the Game Goodbye, Kiss the Death, and Last Kiss? Like, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, sonically, they kind of use a lot, I would argue, without even looking too deep into it, I could be wrong, but I feel like there's a lot of sort of similar producers. It's sort of chasing whatever the sound, the hot sound is at the time, while also having the street shit that's dope, which has kept Jada afloat, in my opinion. But like on Kiss the Game Goodbye, right? What's on here? Um, knock Yourself Out, fire, classic, stupid classic. We gonna make it, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound slanderous here, but I was never crazy about the song, but I respect it. I think it's definitely a good song. I, I'm just not like over the moon about it. Um, none of y'all better is insane. Primo beat, fantastic. Put your hands up. Nah, put your hands down. <laughs> it's a good song. Um, and that's about it. Feel Me was okay. And this is... Anyway, but my point is, so you've got 21 songs, some skits and stuff like that. And, you know, again, I don't think this is a bad album. Because, look, listen, an album that has two to three classic cuts can't be a bad album. You guys are giving ranks to great albums that have zero classic songs, zero class, zero replay value. Which is insane to me, just because it sounds... Um, <laughs> cohesive or whatever, you know, or it has a concept or whatever silly ideas that, you know, newbies come up with. You know, an album that has classic songs is not a bad album. But I will say that overall, it's uneven, exactly. Like this, this I agree with. You know, you could say that Jada drops uneven albums, and I will totally agree with that. But that doesn't mean that the songs are all terrible. Um, this album, Kiss of Death, what was on here? Still Feel Me is incredible. But side incredible these are you know those two alone make this a fantastic like at least those songs are fantastic um there was another one by black black key did a beat on here that i liked why was okay scott source i didn't really care for why you so mad at was also kind of okay so it's uneven you know but they're not bad because someone will go you see kendrick is better than jake uh, by kendrick is better than jada kiss because kendrick has full albums <clears throat> Sorry. And I'm like, Kendrick has full albums of pure mid, of pure whack shit. Like, please don't compare the two. Jada Kiss is a far superior rapper to Kendrick, has way more classic songs than Kendrick. Kendrick has no classic songs, right? So 
again, this is that comparison that doesn't really be making sense because that's how these, you know, I notice now with these internet weirdos, that's what they do. What they'll do is they'll go, oh, uh, they'll pump up these mediocre albums by their favorite artist and then say, oh, well, this person was known for not having like a classic album. So clearly Kendrick's better than Jadakiss. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Just because your standards was low as fuck doesn't mean that our standards were low as fuck. Okay. Jadakiss is about albums. Any, pick any of those three albums that, that Jada came with in the beginning, at least. All of them are better than anything Kendrick has ever put out. So there you go. Cut it out. Jada Kiss coming with that heat. What else am I listening to? Hold on, let me show you. Let me get these albums right. I want to name these albums that I'm listening to. See this comment here. Uh, Styles P had a better debut album than Kiss. I, I, I would agree with that. Um, um, actually, let me see that. Styles P, Gangsta and Gentleman. I think I even own this album. I want to say that this was better for sure because um, Good Times was was great. Um, Black Magic was dope. Um, Soul Clap, I love Soul Clap. This was my shit. This probably might, might still be my favorite Styles P song ever. Um, um, the Life, Nobody Believes Me. I love Nobody Believes Me. So yeah, I mean, it was a better debut, but it, it, again, it wasn't a perfect album, but um, there are more songs you could take away. Again, that's the whole point. I've always said that that's how you rate an album. It's like, how many classic, like super great replay value songs are there on this album? It's not about whether it's a concept album or not, or whatever goofy metric that people use now to judge albums. It's replay value. How much of this music am I going to play again? And if it's very few of it, then that's probably not a good album. But if quite a bit of it, I'm going to replay again, then that's a pretty good album, right? <clears throat> Dirty A Special, name of his album. He got two albums that he put out. It's called Stabbed and Shot 2. Wow. Then he also yeah. put out Mother and Gun. Wow, super deep. Little Eto. How could I forget my brother, Little Ito? Uh, Little Ito. I've tried to listen. To this. Fire. Ito. Fire, fire, fire. You don't know who Little Ito is? Look him up. I've tried. I, I can't say that I've listened to a ton of Little Ito. Aguilar, but... Black Rich Port, coming soon. Yeah, I've tried to listen to these garbage names. Say what you want about Aguilar. What we not going to do is act like he don't make dope music. Say whatever you want. Aguilar. Um... Agala is one of those guys that, again, I remember him from New York Rada music, exactly. I don't think he's really made anything past that. I'm going to be honest with you. And that's a primo beat. So, New York Rada music, we played for keeps. The, the, song, the song was hot. The song was hot. Um, so, again, it's like... Again, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, you know. If you're taking shots at Rhapsody... But then you're saying that Agala, you know. Now, is Agala a better rapper than Rhapsody? Hands down, for sure. But it's not like a huge difference, if that makes sense. You know, like Rhapsody is just mid and all around. Agala, at least you can tell, has some sort of hip hop in him, in the sense that he's a New Yorker. He's actually made a signature record where Rhapsody has not, right? New York Rider music, he's actually made something that I can go, oh, okay. So yes, Agala is a better rapper, but it's not like Agala is like a super vastly superior rapper. No, they're all kind of mid, really, in the grand scheme of things. And I say that with all due respect um, to Agala. Agala, my man, if you ever see this, I haven't really seen and heard a lot of your music. I've certainly tried, and I haven't heard anything as good as New York Rider music. Just being real with you. So you know, and I and I heard that when that came out. So you know, not the best example. I like OT The Real too. OT The Real is fire to me. OT The Real is not a great name. So, OT The Real. Okay. 
screw face white rapper with um, Benny the Butcher. <laughs> I don't know about this. I, I this this would be a skip for me. But anyway, um, who else? And you gotta name the songs, please. Like that's what I always find. Like if somebody asks me, look, listen, Tochi, what's your opinion on so like you like this? You know, what artists are you listening to? If I tell you, oh, I really like, you know, let's say uh, Glorilla, right? I'll tell you the songs by Glorilla to me that are worth listening to. Right, I'm not gonna just point you out in the, in the, in the abyss and go like Glorilla. Like I'll say FNF, um, what's that song? TGIF, and I would say listen to Ghetto with Hit Kid. Those three start with start there. And if you don't like none of them, you're probably not really gonna like her shit. I would say, you know what I'm saying. And again, those songs are not crazy. Those are not like wow, you gotta like you're really missing something. No, but my whole point is, you know. You have to make signature records. There's just no way around it. You got to make songs that even people who don't listen to you, and even better, people that hate you, that don't like your vibe, that don't wouldn't ordinarily even check for your shit, but they hear that song and they go, man, that shit's fire. That's undeniable. Those are the people you got to make music for. Because I was just listening to this too. <laughs> 38 is trash. 38 is trash. What is he talking about? Agala. Eh, eh. Right? Like he's talking about these. Eh. These, are, these are street J. Coles. All of these guys. These are all J. Coles. Again, they just have more roaches in their crib than J. Cole did. But it's all the same sleepy shit. Um, fire album right here. God's timing. Graph. Fire. I, I'm not sure I believe Listen that. to God's Timing by Graf and 38 Special. Who did the production? I don't smoke reefer. So I don't listen to Larry Jew. Oh, this just came out. So yeah, let's... You know what? So... <laughs> now I agree with Larry June is trash. <laughs> Look at a waste basket emoji. Larry June is fucking garbage. But, um, okay, this album just came out, God's Timing, it grabs on there with a, with a gun and a cross. Wow, that's deep. Posing like DMX and slipping or whatever. It's the DMX pose, right? This is going to be lame, okay? Told you, how do you know? I just know. This is an album that will come and go. Now, I could be totally wrong. You know how I'll know that this album is worth listening to? It's not today that I'll know. It'll be two years from now. Two years from now, someone goes, yo, um, I'm outside and I hear some song and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck is that? And someone's like, yeah, this was on God's timing. And I'm going, oh, that album? That's usually how these things go. Again, time and replay value. But until then, with someone like like a Graph or 38 Special, skippable. I don't smoke reefer. I don't get that type shit. Yeah, weed raps and shit, I don't, you know. Like super weed raps. <sighs> J, street, another J. Cole. Weed, weed to J. Cole. Shit's boring. I'm tripping. I said Kiss ain't got good catalog. Doggy tripping talking like Kiss ain't good catalog. Fam, do you proofread what you wrote before I'm tripping? First of all, I said he got dope music, but I did say he never made a good album. See right here. You can see a comment. So on. I ain't like that Graph and 38 album. Yeah, it's probably garbage. What the fuck am I listening to that shit for? I did say that. Probably straight garbage. So you didn't like Graph and 38 album, but you like the day. You from Harlem. That's what it is. That's why you like the Dave East and, and, and um, A-Rap music. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's possible. I figured it out. As soon as you came in here, you said you liked that new project see and this is the thing and look listen people, most people have their biases they'll like something because it's from their borrow or whatever i'm not that guy okay this is why with all due respect people like my shit because they know i'm i give it to you raw unbiased i'm from toronto i didn't like drake when drake first came out and i've said this before but i like drake now or i should say i liked when drake the asap drizzy that shit was fire to me you know what I'm saying? And it's not because he's from Toronto. It was like, oh, shit. 
Like, this dude is really doing it. And then after that, oh, he's from Toronto. Okay, now he's rapping. I respect that. But I don't just listen to Drake because he's from Toronto. I've never been that guy. Again, you're talking to a dude who grew up in Saudi Arabia. Do I think that some guy in Saudi Arabia is automatically dope because they grew up there? Like, give me a fucking break. Dope is dope. I don't do that where you're from. Rap to me is regionless. You know what I'm saying? Dope is dope. What else was I listening to recently? When someone says someone is cool, that means they're trash. That, that, that's just them basically saying, nah, they don't, they don't want to just put it out there and be like, that person is actually mid. Or I would ignore them most of the time. Uh, that's what that means. Graph is cool, aka graph is trash. I was listening to something else recently. How do I see my downloads? Oh, recently played. Here we go. I was listening to old shit. I was so yeah. disappointed. I started listening to old shit. Yeah, you're not listening to none of these new niggas. You mentioned them, but really, are they? They really got Lil Ito got that replay oh. value? No, no. Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> Freddie Gibbs. See again, Street J Cole. You know, Freddie or Cocaine J Cole. Um, I've talked about Freddie Gibbs so many times. Um, <laughs> I'm here dying of laughter. Um, yeah. I've actually talked about <laughs> Freddie Gibbs quite a bit now that I think about it. Um, I, you know, he's just one of those people. He likes to, um, he likes to, he likes the attention. So, you know, no, I'm not listening to anything Freddie Gibbs. That's an instant skip. I've wasted enough time trying to listen to Freddie Gibbs. I know y'all want to call him Spready. I know you only live once. I know y'all want to call him Spready. Y'all want to talk about how he got beat up. All that shit is cool. <laughs> All that might be true. Mm -hmm. But let me give you something else. Eight out of ten rappers you like suck cock. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. This, this is Don't. This if he got... <laughs> Yo, the way that doggy... Like, doggy, that's some funny shit. And the way that... <laughs> He just threw it in there. <laughs> oh my god. First of all, pause. The secondly, um that's great fucking again, you know, we know the hot shit, man. Ninety nine point nine percent of these niggas ain't shit. <laughs> and most of these suck dick. Um <laughs> Jerry said that shit back in 96 or whenever this came out, 98. Okay. He was, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry was saw the future. <laughs> Shout out to Jerry the damager. Caught out there spreading his, his gibbs. He got caught out there getting his ass whooped. That is what it is. But that's what we saw. But a lot of these dudes be loaning their face to other dudes. <laughs> it's just the truth. So are we gonna hold that on, against Dory. him? Y'all might as well just loaning their <laughs> loaning their face to other dudes. It's crazy. That's crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! But this is also why, again, I love hip hop, man. And I, and I have to say, this is um, you know, with all due respect to to my Black American people, I, I just I, the slang always kills me. This is a, one of the major things that got me into rap. I just like, particularly, particularly New Yorkers, East Coast people, but just how they play with words and shit, that shit always kills me. Receipts, all, all this stuff, like, it's just so creative. Um, and it's raw and hilarious all at the same time. So, <laughs> I've never heard somebody say that they, you know, loaning, loaning their, <laughs> loaning your, so your face is fucking crazy. That's crazy. Just get out of the whole in the whole music industry. You might as well not like nobody. This is the truth. <laughs> I gave up on who's a fun boy or not, cause it's it, it's a lot of them. <laughs> so he just got caught. <laughs> so we gonna judge people off their music based off of them being spready? Come on, man. 
Oh, Damon Harris, you just want to argue. Come on now, that Gibbs album. Oh, you, you said it's not, see? Disqualified. Yeah, that album's probably garbage. It's all, it's all so, <clears throat> Stephen, peace out. So listen. That Freddie Gibbs shit is dope. I ain't gonna steal y'all wrong. I ain't gonna tell y'all some shit is dope and it's whack. I ain't gonna do that to y'all. Mm, wow. I ain't gonna be like, yo, some shit is dope and it ain't. I'm gonna I'm point you to some good music. Graph shit was dope. And 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 um Freddie Gibbs. It's like my favorite, my favorite shit that I was listening to was Freddie Gibbs, first and foremost. I listened to the Graft album, listened to Stab and Shot, listened to Mother's Gun, listened to the Ransom album. I like Nicholas Craven as a producer as well. No. Yeah, that's what I was listening to. All that garbage ass shit. Now, again, I would love to hear Doggy tell me why he thinks that shit's dope. Because again, can you explain it? What is it about the music? Not the imagery, not the posturing of it, okay? Not the familiarity with it being boom bap, you know, NYC based that he's, you know, liking. But like, what is it about the way that those guys construct music that's dope to him? That's what I want to know. Because to me, all of them niggas is trash. And there's nothing interesting about how they construct music. They're just guys who are like, oh, Mob Deep's hot. You know, uh, let me do like a watered down version of Mob Deep Prodigy music. I don't want to hear that shit. The why, why? I didn't listen to Halloween Havoc 4. Shane Noir is dope. I got to listen to that. I got to get to that one. Yeah, if you got to get to some shit, you're not going to listen to it. That means that shit was mid. <sighs> you don't care about that artist. Anyway. Half of these guys, a lot of these guys, and they know it. They know it. They know it. They know who each other be. You know, they know it. I mean, Diddy wasn't partying by himself, right? That's a fact. But then again, you know, it's interesting. Again, and I've talked about this. You know, or, or, you know, your sexual orientation doesn't mean shit to me at the end of the day, really. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Um, now, let's see if he says anything of value here. I'm about to roll out of this because I think I've spoken enough on it. I'm not Peter Rosenberg. I'm not B Dot. I'm not Elliot Wilson. I'm not Joe Button. I'm not Queens Flip. Well I'm not none of these dudes that's going key key with you. <laughs> key key facts. And only go at the pop artists. That's right. That's if I don't like something, now I'm saying it. You know why? Because it's my opinion. Yeah, and I think I'll um, end it on this note. Um, there's still about, let's say, 24 minutes. Look, Doggy says some really interesting shit. I think I've covered the most important stuff. But. Um, yeah, we just got to be more honest, man. And it's from a place of love. It's not like, you know, I'm not doing it to diss these dudes personally or whatever. Like if, you know, the truth is even people that I think are whack, like I've mentioned, whether it be Lil Ito, or Nicholas Craven, if I met them in real life, I'd probably be like, look, listen, you know, I'm not listen. I don't really listen to your shit, but, you know, I wish you well type of thing, you know. And if they wanted to know more, I would tell them this is exactly why I don't really listen to your shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's not personal. And I think that we have to start getting critique and criticism back. One of the things that has destroyed art is this lack of critique, lack of criticism. And it's all become this very sort of identity politics bullshit. Oh, I, because I'm this, therefore I like this. No, like, do you like it because it's dope? You like it because it's constructed a certain way, right? Is, is it is it speak to you in terms of how well to put together it is not what identity it's shooting for right and it's it, it's a thing that's infected all this art whether it be film tv shows music it's it's really in hip-hop it's come through everywhere now you know what i'm saying and um i see right through that shit and i think that's why people a lot of times when they first start watching my channel they're like what is this dude talking about he doesn't know what he fuck he's talking about he's a hater or he just, he's, he's so out there. He's so whack. But then when you start to watch my shit and you kind of see my opinions, nine times out of 10, I always get this. And I see this in the comments. So I'll be like, yo, when I started watching your shit, I thought you were fucking crazy. And 
your stuff was stupid, blah, blah. But now, as I've become more and more informed about hip hop, I see that you're super, super duper on point. And that's the truth. Because I look past all the identity politics and shit. I don't even consider that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like an afterthought. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe it's made for that kind of audience. Like, as an afterthought. But what I think first and foremost is, what is the music itself telling me? That's it. What is the music itself telling me? Then I look at what is the rapper as a, like, in terms of how they're presenting themselves, their narrative, what are they trying to say? But the music first and foremost. You listen to the music close enough, it'll tell you everything you need to know about that artist, okay? And on that note, I say peace.